in the book of Nehemiah in chapter number 1. The first chapter there of Nehemiah in chapter number 1. And I want to share with you some thoughts that we need to think about as a church. Now this message that I, w I was going to preach something else, but I got to thinking about our church this morning, and I decided this, this is what you need to hear. You need to hear this message from the book of Nehemiah. And we all know what a great man Nehemiah was. And, and so we, we find here in verse 1 of the first chapter, and he says the words of Nehemiah, the son of of whatever that guy's name is, and it came to pass in the month of Chisholm, in this twentieth year as I was in Shazan, the palace, that Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left in the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the providence are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandment. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have great, very, we have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not, have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad like the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments, now listen to this verse, if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name thereof. Now, therefore, are thy servants and thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and thy strong hand. O Lord, I, beareth, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy, uh, thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper I pray thee, thy servants, this day, and grant them mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. I love the book of Nehemiah, I really do. I love, I love to read it. And the reason that I like to read Nehemiah is because it's a book of encouragement. You won't, you won't be discouraged after you read the book of Nehemiah and study it. But I love, love this book. And Nehemiah was a man, he was a man who loved God, and he was very dependent upon God. Now, you got to remember this, the, the city of Jerusalem was known as the city of God. And here it laid in burnt ashes, and here it laid with, with destroyed the gates of the city. Now, this bothered Nehemiah. And he, he, was, he was concerned about what had happened to the city of God. Now, you've got to remember this. The first six chapters of the book of Nehemiah is a reconstruction of the walls 
a reconstruction of the walls, but chapter 7 through 13 is the instruction to the people. So we see here that the, what, the, how the walls have been destroyed and how they've been destructed, but yet we see also how God, people, the people of God are to be instructed. Now, walls, the walls symbolizes our lives. Whenever you read the book of Nehemiah and you talk about the walls, he is talking about our lives. And sometimes through neglect, through neglect, we find our lives beginning to crumble down. Amen? It's because we have neglected something. And I think it's because we have neglected the will of God and the word of God and the way of God. We have neglected those things and therefore our life seems like it's crumbling down down it's falling apart then we look at our church and after the, after this morning and we look at our church and we say is our church crumbling apart it doesn't have to be that way it isn't if the people will just get excited about the church and be enthused about the church and become a a good representative of the church you know what god can do he can rebuild the walls of this church and I want God to rebuild the walls of this church. Now, the walls sometimes, though through the lake, we our lives begin to crumble. And, and when we think about these walls, it thinks about our lives. Now, you have to remember this. The city of Jerusalem was the city of God. And I, can, and I told you this before, and I'll tell it to you again tonight, that when people walked by the city of Jerusalem, they were walking past the city of God. Jerusalem was a beautiful place. Its gates and its, its walls and, and all that the inside of those walls represented was people just walked by and they would stop and they would admire the city of Jerusalem. How beautiful this city is. But now, all of a sudden, because of the sins of the people, now the walls have been torn down and the gates have been burned down. And therefore, when people walk by, when they, people walk by the city of God, all they can do is just shake their head and say, what a pity, what a pity that these people let the enemy destroy their city. Now, that's, that's, that's giving you a, a biblical uh, illustration or definition of what it, it talks about. Because the city of God was the city where God dwelt. That's where he lived. It was from God that we draw our strength, isn't it? Amen? I wish we could get these people to where they would say amen. But the whole thing is, I want you to understand is that it was from God that we draw our strength and the rebuilding of the walls of our life is a picture of reestablishing the strength in our lives. Now our church, our church needs a revamping. Our church needs to be refurbished. Amen? And what we need to understand is that these, these are people today that we know whose defenses have fallen away. There's people who, who have, the devil has, the reason they don't go to church is because the devil has stolen their church time. People don't feel like it's good to go to church anymore. They want to blame the, 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 the virus, virus or whatever it is. But don't blame the virus. Blame the devil if you don't want to go to church because he's the one who doesn't want you to go to church anyway. So their lives are all are seemingly, they're just falling apart. But God, listen to me, praise his name. I want to reach down and I want to strengthen my life. I'm not interested in letting the devil have victory in my life. I'm interested in strengthening my life. And the only way I can strengthen my life is through God. Amen? Who giveth me strength. Amen? Glory to God. It's just a wonderful thing to know that that strength that we have today, that strength we have to live this life, it has to come from God. And and it's, uh, it was Nehemiah who said over in chapter chapter 8, uh, we talked about the strength of God. It's the strength of God that strengthens us every day. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in defeat. 
I'm interested in doing what God wants us to do. Nehemiah instructs us, he instructs us in the steps of restoring the walls and the gates of our lives, our homes, and listen, our church. Our church. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. I'm going to give you something real quick tonight. First of all, I want you to look at verse 4. I want you to look at verse 4 of Nehemiah chapter 1. And it came to pass when I heard these words. Now watch this. When I heard these words, now what did he hear? He heard how the gates had been destroyed and and, and had been burnt down and the walls destroyed. He heard about this. And what did he do when he heard about this? He just sat down and he wept. He cried. And he mourned certain days, and he fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Nehemiah was concerned. That's the reason he sat down and he wept. That's the reason he sat down and he mourned, because he was concerned about what happened to the city of God. Can I ask you something here tonight? How many of you interested in your church? How many of you got time to take and, and praise God and at the same time can weep for this church and mourn for this church? I'm telling you what, uh, listen to me. If you're a member of this church and you go to this church, you ought to be concerned about this church. Nehemiah was concerned about the city of God. He was concerned and he wept and he mourned because he was con- he was uh, he was concerned about it. I wish we had Christians today that would be concerned about Middle Creek Baptist Church and they would make a vow and they would say, Lord, I'm willing to do anything I can to rebuild the walls of Middle Creek Baptist Church. We need people to be concerned. Amen? You don't need to be concerned about the problem. You don't need to be concerned about the, what, what's going on. What you need to be concerned is the walls of this church is not going to be burnt down. It's not going to be torn down. But we're going to build it back the way God wants it built back. I can get up here and preach all night, Tony. But unless you have where you want to be. See, his concern, Nehemiah's concern was the beginning of the restoration process. This church will never be restored until the people begin to mourn and weep over it. He wept. My Bible says there that he wept. That points to a strong emotion. He got emotionless. He got emotion about the problem. He got emotion about the gates being torn down and the gates being burned and the walls torn down. He got emotional about it. Oh, I, I'm, when I go to church, I don't cry. I'm just afraid people would think something strange of me. Listen to me. Don't worry about what people think. Worry about what God thinks. Amen? And don't you think we ought to shed some tears over this church? I did before I came to church. Amen? When I went home, I saw my wife, and then I went home to rest just a little bit, and I couldn't help but cry and, and over this church right here. Shed some tears over this church. Because you know what? I don't want to see the walls of this church torn down. I don't want to see the gates burned down. I like to see the walls of this church built back. Amen? And and what we got to do, first of all, we got to have a concern for the church. He had he said he mourned. He had deep mourning for it. You know, it's like when somebody we love or somebody we know dies, we mourn for them. Don't you think you ought to mourn for your church? Don't you think you ought to be have some feelings for your church and want your church to be strong for the Lord? Amen? And this is what we don't have. We don't have people who are concerned. You will never rebuild your life. You will never rebuild your home. And you will never rebuild your church unless you have a concern for it. And that's what Nehemiah had for the city of God. He had a concern. He was concerned. Listen to me. When Nehemiah heard of the ruins, he wept. 
He prayed. He mourned because he was concerned over the situation. Have you looked at the possibilities that God had given you in your church? Have you have you really looked? Have you have you wept? Have you prayed? Have you mourned over this church? After today, you should have went home. And shed some tears for this church. Are you concerned enough to weep? Are you concerned enough to pray? Are you concerned enough to mourn for this church? Are you concerned about a wayward child? Huh? Are you concerned about a failed marriage? Hmm? That ought to give you something to weep about. Amen? But you see here, Nehemiah was deeply concerned about what had happened. But look at, look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. He says, Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. Now watch this. Not only was Nehemiah concerned, but Nehemiah believed in confession. Do you believe in confession? Huh? He had prayed before. My Bible says that he prayed day and night. He prayed. But what but was praying he was he prayed day and night, but he was praying now. He was praying now. Listen, Israel has sinned against God. Nehemiah has sinned against God. He he put we in there. He was saying not only Israel has sinned against God, but I've sinned against God also. We and he, he uses that word in there. He says, both I and my father's house have sinned. Sometimes, listen to me, sometimes I need, I need and you need what David had over in Psalms 51. And what did he do in Psalms 51? He confessed his sin. See, he was concerned. And therefore, he confessed his sin to God. And we and we need concern, don't we, in this church? We listen to me. We don't you know that we need to be confessing if if we got something wrong in our lives. Nehemiah was concerned, but he was also believed in confession. He believed he needed to get right with God, and the only way to get right with God was to confess his sin. Now look at verse eleven. Look at verse eleven. It says in verse eleven. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant, this day, and grant, th- grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Now, Nehemiah was concerned and Nehemiah believed in confession, and Nehemiah made a commitment. He made a commitment to God. Amen. Don't you think God wants you who are sitting here and myself to make a commitment to God that we can do what we can do to rebuild the walls of this church? I know we can sit around, we can talk about it, we can uh, uh, plan it before others and tell it to what other people say. Listen, they don't do no good for your church. What you need to do, you need to mourn, you need to weep and mourn and pray for your church. Amen? See, Nehemiah, he believed in, he was deeply concerned, but Nehemiah also believed in confession. But he, and because, because he was concerned and because he believed in confession, he was ready to make a commitment. Who was he making the commitment to? He was making a commitment to God. Amen? He, wasn't made, he didn't come to somebody else and make a commitment. He didn't get committed to somebody else or some program or some religion, something like that. He made a commitment to God. He says, Lord, I'm concerned. Lord, I'm confessing my people have sinned. I've sinned, and I've sinned with them. But, Lord, I'm ready to make a commitment to you. And that's what we need in our churches today, somebody who's ready to make a commitment to God. He prayed. You know what he prayed for? He prayed to 
prosper. Do you notice that in verse 11? He prayed to prosper. He, you say, preacher, what did he pray to prosper in? What did he pray? What did he bring? He, he called, he says that, that something. What was he wanting to, to prosper in? That would rebuild in the walls. He had a plan brewing in his mind. He had something definite he wanted to ask. Listen. I'm your I'm your fill in pastor. That's all that I am. That's all that I'm ever ever am. But I want to tell you tonight, if you if you're concerned about your church, then you ought to do what you can to make a commitment to God. Listen to me. We are all, we all are so guilty in bending around the bush, bending around the bush with God, and it never seems to come out and ask for what he, we need. Now listen to me. What you need to do before you go to bed tonight, you need to get along with God. And you need to ask Him what He, want, what he wants you to do to rebuild these walls. And you know what? You'll be surprised how God will let you know what He wants you to do. Amen? Amen. 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 He will let you know what He wants you to do. Now, we... We don't want to admit that we've sinned. You know, we'd like that. I don't, I, if I've sinned against God, I don't want to admit that I've sinned. And you don't either. We don't want to admit our lives are falling apart. People, people who get out of the will of God and the way of God and the Word of God, their lives are falling apart, but they don't want to admit that because everybody thinks they're a failure. But that's not the point. We don't want to admit that we are in need of help. Oh, I can handle this myself. I don't need, who needs God? I can handle this myself. No, no, you can't either. You can't do it without God. I don't care who you are. You may think you you solved the problem, but you haven't solved the problem because the problem is going to reset itself and come back. But what you need is God. Amen? We need to make commitment that we are going to, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, we who are here tonight, that we're going to do everything we can to rebuild these walls in our lives. It may be to be, maybe, maybe you need to rebuild your home. Maybe your home's falling apart. Maybe you need to rebuild a marriage. Marriage is falling apart. But I'll tell you what, you may want to make a commitment to rebuild your church. That's where it begins. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Here was old Nehemiah. He was, he was out of concern. He was out of confession. He made a commitment to be a project for God. This is how any return to the grace of God must begin. If we, if we, need, to show, we need to show some concern for the church. We must... Do some confessing. Am I right? And we must be willing to make a commitment. Notice, go, go, go to Nehemiah the second chapter and watch this. Look at verse 10 of Nehemiah chapter 2. I didn't mean to use this, but I just happened to remember reading it. Chapter 2, look at verse 10. It says, when Sambalat and Tob- and Hor- when Sambalat the Hornite and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man who to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Now watch this. Look at look what I got you there. Look at verse nineteen in chapter two. Verse nineteen, chapter two. But when Sambalat the Hornite and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite and Geshem the now he he had third persons come in her the Arabian heard it they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said what is this thing that you do will you rebel against the king you know what when I look at that old Nehemiah showed a lot of courage and rebuilding those walls. Do you want to know something? 
all of us here, it's going to take courage to do what we need to do to rebuild the walls. It's going to take some courage to do that. They, they are a picture of the flint. Listen to me. Sam Ballant, Tobiah, and that third person there. Every one of those is, uh, is a picture of the flesh and our enemy. You know what? The worst, the en- worst enemy we got is not the devil. You know what the worst enemy is? Us. Us. We're the worst enemy to ourselves. It's not the devil. The devil just all he does is tempt us. He can't do anything to us, but we can do something to ourselves. And that's why we're the worst enemy is to ourselves, is us. Because we want to do what we want to do and not what God wants to do. We don't want to be concerned. Amen? We don't want to make that commitment to God. Amen? But you know what? Anybody who is concerned and willing to make a commitment to God is a person who's very, very courageous. Because listen, the world, the devil, and the flesh is going to stand against you and do everything he can to discourage you. Amen? That's why you need to study the book of Nehemiah and be in Encouraged in what it, the devil. Listen to me. The devil, the devil resists the way he resists the word. He resists the word of God and will of God. Nehemiah said, "I will rise up and build." The devil says, "I'm going to rise up and oppose you." Listen to me. We can hear as, at this church. We can say, "We're going to rise up and build." I'm going to tell you right now. The devil's going to say, "I'm going to rise up and oppose you." I'm going to stand against you. Amen. But listen to me. It's going to take a lot of courage on our part to stand against the devil, against the flesh, and against the world, and go on and do what God wants us to do. There was old Nehemiah. He was concerned, confessed. He made a commitment and all that. But it took courage for Nehemiah to take the stand that he did. It took courage for him to stand against these enemies that he faced. Can I say this to you? And I'm about finished. It's going to take courage for all of us here tonight to stand against the devil. And everyone's going to stand against the flesh and stand against the world. But I'm in, listen, the only thing that I'm interested in is doing everything I can to rebuild the walls, to strengthen this church. To be the church that God wants it to be. Not what, not the church that I want it to be, but what God wants. And you all have had that. And, he, he, and Nehemiah wept, he prayed, and he mourned against, against things. And he was, because he was so concerned for the rest of the church and the rebuilding of those walls. Listen to me. It's going to take some courage for all of us. All of us. Ask me, that includes you and me to take a stand for what is right in rebuilding the church. The devil, the devil will have his symbolics. The devil will have his Tobias. He's, he's going to have them out there. And they're going to do everything they can to oppose us in what we're trying to do. And he's going to try and whisper in our ears what you're wanting to do, Ed Taylor, can't be done. Can I say this? God can do anything. There's nothing impossible with God. Amen? That's the book of Jeremiah. Nothing is impossible with God. Now, let me let look at verse 15. I'll quit. Look at verse 15 of chapter 2. It says, Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall, and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley, and, and so returned. Now, what does all that mean? Nehemiah was a very cautious leader. That tells us that he was cautious. He was cautious. He, he went out before he even talked to anybody about what to do or what he was going to do. He got up in the middle of the night. He got him a mule and he began to go around the, the city to see what all needed to be done. And, and he was very, very cautious 
in doing so. He didn't. He did not tell anybody what he was going to do. He spied out the situation on his own. Listen, he doesn't start. He doesn't start laying bricks on his first arrival in Jerusalem. He doesn't rush out and get the people involved. Sometimes, sometimes I think it's best that we don't let anybody know what we're going to do in build, rebuilding the church. Does that make any sense? People just has a way of discouraging us and being, becoming an object of rejection to our plans. So Nehemiah, he was cautious. He takes note of what exactly what needs to be done. I don't have time to go into verses 12 and 15. So then begins to lay his plans. Now listen, we, we who are here tonight, we need to step back and we need to take a look. We need to take a look at our lives. We need to take a look at our homes. And we need to take a look at our church. In that order, our lives, our homes, because listen to me, the church is only going to be as strong as what the home is. And the home's only going to be as strong as what the, our lives are. Amen? So we've got to have strong lives, strong homes, into a strong church. Now, whenever we do that, in our assessment, there must be that honesty. There has to be honesty. When we look at, when we look at the situation in our church, we've got to be honest about it. And we've got to be honest with ourselves. Am I the problem? Am I the need? What is my need? I'm being honest. What do I need to do, Lord? And the Lord will show you what you need to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we need to be honest. We need to be sincere. But listen to me. There must be about us, about us, a willing spirit to do what God wants us to do. And we just can't go out there and say, Lord, uh, tell somebody we need this or we need that, or we can pray, Lord, the church needs this and church needs that. We've got to have a willing spirit. Maybe God wants us to be the part the church needs. Oh, I give my money. I give my tithes and I pay, I'll pay all that. That don't make no difference. It ain't the money your church needs. The church needs you. The church needs you, not your money. Now, don't get me wrong on that. I don't want to start preaching on that. <laughs> so Nehemiah, he was very cautious. But do you notice in verse 18, look at verse 18. It says, Then I told them, who did he tell? He told Nehemiah, he sent Baal and Tobiah. He says, And I told them, The hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's word, that he had spoken unto me, and they said, Let us rise up and build, so they strengthened their hands for the good work. Did you see that? Nehemiah was concerned. Nehemiah made a commitment. And now the construction was finished. The walls had been restored. The gates had been put back up. Now the city of God was beautiful once again. Why? Why, preacher? Why? Because here's somebody who was concerned. And here's somebody who was willing to make a commitment to see it. And, but they were very cautious. And they were very courageous. Listen to me. You and I need to be very courageous. We need to also finish the construction. How do I start? You start going by witnessing the people. You may lead somebody to the Lord. You may not lead somebody to but you ought to witness. Listen to me. If we go out and visit like God wants us to visit, we may not see who we visit come to church, but God's going to bring somebody in because we went out and witnessed to them. Am I right? I don't know how you feel tonight. I don't know if you're concerned. I don't know if you're willing to confess. I don't I don't know if you're willing to make a commitment. I I have no idea 
if you're willing to show courage or caution us. But you know what? Are you ready to start the final construction? And it begins by doing what God wants us to do. Am I right? And I pray that everyone, there's not many here tonight, but I pray that every one of us here tonight can let this new work start in us. I pray, I pray that we can let God have His way in our lives. We're willing to forsake all of our wants and we only want what God wants. And if we'll do that, then God will begin the construction process of this church. And you'll be surprised the people that He can bring in.